first time I ever heard of or saw Coon Rapids was when I came here to visit the place with Roswell when I was at a teacher's convention. I skipped it to come up and look over Coon Rapids. And that was in about 1920. We came into Coon Rapids in the back road that was covered with dust and there was no curb and gutter. The, the, uh, it looked pretty uh, unkept. I was used to seeing a pretty town like Cedar Falls or something, and I thought it was awful. And I knew that I was never going to live here. And this was before I definitely said yes. There was a kitchen and a living room and a stairway that had stairs about six inches apart and walls that slanted to the ground. It was a kind of old house that uh, was, uh, there were no gables in it that you couldn't sleep in, so it had a sleeping porch built onto it and a big, great big front porch. And uh, it was a, kind of a house that a couple of bachelor friends would be living in. We lived on this place for four years and decided we'd go to Des Moines in the real estate business and see if we'd rather be city people than country people. And we lived there four years very nicely. First year, we lived on High Street, and then we bought a very nice home on 44th Street, and I, I thought my life was quite permanent down there, and I loved the environment and the uh, social uh, life of uh, Des Moines, and we established ourselves there with many good friends. Among them was Henry A. Wallace. We were entertained at a party to, with Henry Wallace to beat him. And uh, uh, Louise and Mickey McBroom, architects, and cousins invited the Wallaces and Bob and me at their home for dinner so we'd get acquainted because they knew we were very interested in what each other was doing. I knew you were here to find out the how and why of hybrid corn and how and why its use will put more money in your pocket. But before we see what has been done with hybrid corn, let's take a look at a field of open pollinated corn. I think you'll recognize it. The job of picking up fallen ears yet remains. 10% of the corn was left on the ground. Too much to leave, but a lot of work to get. And here's what you finally do get. Ununiform size, shape, and quality. The reason for the lack of uniformity and vigor in the field that we've just looked at is that you don't know which pollen grain pollinated each separate kernel. In other words, you don't know who the daddy was. No one would be so foolish as to try to improve livestock without selecting the finest sire. The reason you get a prize-winning bull or a good boar is because some breeder has selected his grandparents with the greatest of care. Now let's take a look at a field of hybrid corn where we too know the father and the grandfather. In fact, we know all of the ancestry for 10 generations back. 110 bushels to the acre means 8,800 pounds of ear corn. It takes sturdy stalks to hold up this kind of a crop. How beautifully they stand. We can even see angle-wise or cross-wise through the cornfield. Take a look down that aisle, a pathway to prosperity. And what fun to pick these golden ears. And man, what a prophet. Khrushchev was having a great long speech in the Politburo, and he said, what, and he was interested in the agriculture of Russia, people, was very backward. 
And he says, what we need is an Iowa Corn Belt. And uh, Lauren Soph, who was the editorial writer for Register and Tribune, picked it up in the news. And he said, if Khrushchev wants an Iowa Corn Belt, he should send a delegation over and see how we do it. Premier Khrushchev drives out to see Roswell Gus farm on the morning of September the 23rd. The first stop is to see an experimental field of red and silver sorghum. This is a good crop for arid land. Here is what happens when the party inspects the stock farm. Every vantage point is occupied by the newspaper photographers and film cameramen. They even use every crack in the fence. The maze is tall and thick on the garst farm. But Premier Khrushchev is on familiar ground here in the maize field. He remarks, even a good farmer sometimes miscalculates. When you plant this way, you don't get enough ears and enough fodder units. You ought to plant two seeds together instead of five. The correspondence advance. Every means is fair in this sort of a thought. Gauss tries to repulse the attack with silence, but of course he's unsuccessful. <laughs> Mr. Khrushchev thinks the old-fashioned shovel on the tractor should be replaced by this. Farmer's family feels that maize is a dull topic of conversation. They have been dreaming of a talk with the Premier. Everybody's on hand, young and old. Mr. Goss displays his maize pickers. They are practical, but not very diversified. Everyone wishes the Premier happiness, good health, and a safe journey. And Mrs. Khrushchev was a very delightful, observing, brilliant woman who had learned about the hybridization of corn and how to plant it and how it should be done. And when we made our, when they, when they planted ours, they had tests of it, and we went over in 56. Many of you have seen our processing plant and visited our seed fields and can vouch for everything you've seen here today and more, too. For the rest, we've tried to bring the mountain to Mohammed to show you how hybrid corn is produced and what it will do for you. Next year, we trust you will join those thousands who know that the quality hybrid is the surest way to happy harvest.